Hey everyone, are you looking for a way to be able to get price to rent ratios for metro and zip code areas throughout the United States? That way you can compare different markets accurately and fast. Well, I'm going to show you how to do that using Python and the Quandl API. My name is Ariel Herrera with the Analytics Ariel channel, where we bridge the gap between real estate and technology. This is part two of a two part series and being able to get this data with Quandl and use Python to quickly create a chart that's going to allow us to see what areas, particularly zip codes, may have the best price to rent ratios. If this is the kind of content that you enjoy, then please subscribe to this channel as well. Like this video so I know to make more of it. All right, let's get started. In the last video, we explored Zillow's housing data, which is encompassed of house values, inventory, as well as rental values. They've published this data for free and is publicly available by going onto their site and downloading files on different geographies all the way down to the zip code. Now, in this channel, we try to make things as efficient as possible, and this really wouldn't be a good solution in the long term, since working with different CSV files and just an Excel application could open itself to error, and it's better for us to do this programmatically. So we were able to find the same exact data on NASDAQ data link in one of their databases particularly with the Quandl API. Quandl, you might've heard of their API before as they're one of the leaders in order to extract data programmatically like stock prices. In this particular data set, it's called Zillow Real Estate Data. Uh, they mention here in a documentation that it has information on markets such as rental sales and inventory. And they also go deeper into what those regions are and some more information on what the actual data sets are. But for this purpose, we're going to dive straight into the information for price to rent ratio. So you might be completely new to price to rent ratio and that's okay. Let's go over it pretty quickly. So from Stessa, you could read more about it on their site, but they basically go into it and say price to rent ratio is a calculation real estate investors use to forecast the potential demand for a rental property in a given market. The simple formula is dividing the median home price by the median annual rent in the market. So for example, say if the median home price in a market is 120,000, the median rent is 11,000, price to rent ratio is 10.91. In a market that's cheaper to rent than to own, if we increase that home price value, we could see that the price to rent ratio increases. So the way we think about this is say if you're a landlord, maybe you want to get into markets where it's difficult for tenants to be able to afford their own home. So thus, you might think that you're going to have a better tenant pool and it's going to have a better opportunity of having um, renters in the future. An example of a market with a high price to rent ratio, I could imagine, would be New York City as well. So this can also be an indicator to see, is an area starting to become unaffordable? Is it an area that we could still jump into on an earlier phase to make an impact as an investor? So you could go more into this article if you want to understand this a little bit more. And I personally don't use this as a sole calculation, but it is a good attribute to at least have handy. Now let's dive into the notebook on how we get price to rent ratio using the Quandl API and Python. So for our first part here, we're going to select the region of interest. And in this case, I'm going to my original home state, New Jersey, and I'm using pandas to select that by state. Then I use a group by and I aggregate how many zip codes are actually in these metro areas because I want to just focus in on one particular metro area and see how price to rent ratio is. So in this case, the top five that we get back is Newark, New York, and Jersey City metro area with about 353 zip codes. And that's very interesting to know. So what I'm going to do here is just filter on this metro area just so we can have our sample size more down instead of looking at the whole United States, but feel free to do that as well. So 
here, the next things that I want to do is get the price to rent ratio, but first I need to get home values and then rent information. So I created this function called get latest Zillow data by region. So in my particular case, I don't really care what the previous home values were, say in 2010. I really just care about right now, what does it look like for the zip codes in this metro area for the price rent ratio? So this function, what I do is I go to this Quandle get table, Zillow data, I pass in an indicator. What I notice is when you actually pass in more than 200 regions to the API, it stalls, either it does not complete their request or it takes a very long time, which is unusual. So what I did to fix that is I first get the length of how many regions are passed through. And if it's over 200, then I basically do a for loop where I only pass in 200 region IDs at a time. If not, then I just straight go and just query the quandle dot get table function to pass in all of my regions at once. Then I look to see per region, what is the latest date? And I only want to get the latest date. So this is why over here, I do a merge and inner join so that it's only joining on those regions with their latest date and that information. So now that I have that function, I can now easily call this data. So if I want to get the median home price, I just send in all of my regions, which in this case is going to be all the zip codes from the New York, Newark, Jersey City area. And I want to get Z all, which is going to be comprising of all types of properties, condo, co-op and single family to get home value. So if I look at the first item within that data frame, I can see that for a particular region, I was able to get that home value. And this is a longer data frame, of course, but I just wanted to see the first one to make sure it worked. Then I repeat this process. I also send in the same exact regions. And then instead I specify the rent code so I can get the rent value. Now the next step here is if you notice, I'm able to get the data back, but region ID doesn't really help me. What is this actual name of the city and what's the zip code? That will be a little bit better of context. So this third part is where I merge these tables together. And now if you look down at the bottom, we're able to get the indicators that we have, the region associated, median price, median rent, which you see there's a null value here, and we'll get into that. Zip code, state, county, city, and metro. So now we have a more full data set. And the next step is adding features. So the price rent ratio feature is actually super easy. It's just taking this median price that we got, and then the median rent is multiplied by 12 for 12 months, and voila, we have the price to rent ratio. Then I wanted to plot this data and I was looking for a good library that could help me pinpoint where to plot this. Uh, I was looking at many different types of Python plotting tools, but some of them were just a little bit more intricate for these purposes. So what I did was look to find the general latitude and longitude per zip code, which from that library that we installed in the last video, I'm able to get the query postal code. And in this case, I get the latitude and longitude. And now we have two more columns that have that information. I then specify which columns I want to look at. And then I sort this by the top PRR, which is the top price to rent ratio. Next, I take this data frame and I just remove whenever price to rent ratio is null, which we'll touch on in a moment. I send in my map box token, which is related to Plotly, easy to get a key. And then I use Plotly Express, the scatter map box function. And this is super easy. I just pass in my data frame, what columns are going to be the latitude and longitude, what is the color, so what's going to be uh, the variable that changes here, which is price to rent ratio. So we could see, if we look at the price to rent ratio, where it's most affordable would be on the lower end here and on the higher end would be higher price rent ratio most people choose to rent 
probably versus own because of the high rents relative to the price. And the number one here is for Somerset County. I'm not as familiar with that county and more familiar with uh, those that are closer to the ocean, but it would definitely be something to look at further and at least I get some oversight. But one of the things that frustrates me at this point is why do we have only a couple of bubbles here? Shouldn't there be so many more zip codes? I'm a little bit confused. So I wanted to check why is this data missing? And for the zip codes within this metro area that I was focused on, only 12 of them were plotted. And when I look at this, I pick one city in particular that had null values, which was Patterson. So for Patterson, we were able to get the median price, but not the median rent. And these are all the zip codes within Patterson, the city. So I drill down a little bit more just to look at, say, Patterson at a city type and not zip code. So my theory was maybe zip code is too granular and for some reason not all the rental data comes through. So let me just try high level at city. And I queried again uh, that Quandle data. I put in the region for that city and then it still didn't come up. So I guess there is still some missing data here. So you're not going to be able to get a full data set for all zip codes just using the Zillow housing data. However, I think this is still a great step. And if we can use other resources to get average or median rent for zip code or metro area, whatever we're looking for, we can append this. So we could basically say, all right, from Zillow, we, we're getting null values, but from another data set, we have that, let's append that, and then let's rerun the price to rent ratio. So I hope this has been useful just to be able to understand how you could use this data set to actually calculate some metrics, how you can plot it, and some ideas on how you can improve upon the data set. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Thanks.